my name is Tom McFlaw and I'm working in Love Sales Hong Kong now and uh, I just come here to do the presentation about clinical film today. Thanks. Hey guys, my name is Sammy Sakai. I've been involved with Cellmaker for about nine years. I've been selling for about 20. Um, the past four years, oh, done about four years of North Sales. Um, and so we, Dominic will give you a full presentation on what we think down the trimming is involved. Thank you. So we will have a Q&A, but at the end, so if you have any questions, you can ask them then. Or if you want to bring them up at any point during the talk, you guys can do that as well. So the first three things we're going to discuss, just roughly uh, the angle of attack, your spinnakers, your shape, and your twist. So angle of attack is the angle the wind is approaching, or the apparent wind is approaching your sail. Um, the shape is about the depth of your sail and the location of that depth as well. Yeah. So as you see, the, a deeper sail in general will be a more powerful sail, and a flatter one will be less powerful. Um, for the, the next one is twist. So the, the less twist you have, then the more power you're able to create, but the more drag you have. The more twist you have, then the less drag, the less power. So it's. Both sides. Yeah, you can hear, there's an example here where there's four different kites in the line. Um, you can't see the individual boats, but you can see how each individual spinnaker has a different level of twist. And they're all sailing in different modes with different intentions. Can we go to the next one, Dom? So every individual sail is built differently into certain needs, but we can also trim each spinnaker or each sail to 
obviously suit our given conditions as well. Um, and that's what we're going to go through next. Here is just an example of an A1 and A2, an A1 being more of a reaching sail, something that's used to sail higher angles, closer to the wind. An A2, slightly deeper, um, bigger in the shoulders and the top of the sail, as you can see. This is designed for doing downwind legs, you know, gaining depth across the course. <coughs> anyone, anyone have any questions? No? Okay. So we're going to start here with light air trimming. Um, generally, light air trimming is going to be more similar to reaching. So we're going to leave it in light air trimming as a general. If you have any specific questions that come up to a reaching, um, we can address those individually as well. So the first thing that we want to be doing in light air is we want to be tightening the lap of the sails. Um, what this does is it's just going to... Don, next one, please. What that does is going to be giving us a flatter profile, and it's also going to be stabilizing the sail. So going back to what we were talking about before, where you want a... You know, the flatter, a flatter sail, or your angle of attack, sorry. Your angle of attack is very relative here. The flatter your sail is, the better the angle of attack in a lighter breeze. You're, you have more control over it, of a finer entry sail than a deeper entry sail. Um, if you have a very deep entry sail, you may find that the flow over the sail becomes detached, and you're not able to actually hold the sail up, which is why we like to go for a nice tight luff in the light breeze. Um, one of the other things that we like to focus on is twist. So twist is very important for you know, how we control it, how we use ourselves as well. For lighter breeze, we like to increase the twist, which reduces our dra drag along those sails and increases the flow. So you're able to get the, sail, the wind to flow faster over the sails. Um, what is, the compromise there is that you're not capturing as much of the pressure, but you obviously, in the, in the light breeze, you're not always looking to capture that. You're, you're looking to get the boat moving quickly, moving forward. Um, if you end up having a very tight leech, you may find that <coughs> the actual spinnaker starts to stall and collapses from the leech, or just stalls in general and isn't able to get your boat moving forward. Um, some of the things that can help you here is leeward heel. So that's obviously not directly related, not actually related to the spinnaker itself. But when you do have heel, it can help the spinnaker become more stable. So rather than having your boat very much upright, um, the spinnaker then becomes unstable. The more heel, you, a little bit of heel having on the boat, um, just allows that spinnaker to settle in in a more natural position, um, and just you know requiring a little bit less wind to actually um, do what it wants to. Um, additionally, apparent or well, keeping the apparent wind angle up, so. As the breeze drops, we want to be sort of attempting to get as much flow over the spinnakers as possible. So when you're when you have a lot of wind, it's very easy to keep that flow going, or it's very easy to you know get more wind in the sails. In the lighter breeze, what you have to do is you are heating the boat up, getting sailing these bigger angles, and generating that apparent wind over the spinnaker to then give you the illusion of having more wind than there really is. Dom, if you want to jump in any time, happy. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's all asymmetric sails. With symmetrical sails in the lighter wind, it's actually very similar. So you kind of want to generate uh, or convert your symmetrical spinnaker into a asymmetric sail. So what you're looking to do here is very similar to the A sail in getting that luff of your sail or creating it from an asymmetric sail to a sorry, a symmetric sail to an asymmetric sail by tightening that luff. You can see here it's not so evident, but the boat is sailing quite light wind and sailing quite high angles. So you see the pole is quite far down, angle quite far down. The luff of the sail is fairly tight. That leech is quite open. So, yeah. Excuse me, when you talk about an open leech, you mean the sheet is let up? So yes, so you have a few options, as Dom talked about with the sheet. So you can have a tweaker line on the sheet, which can bring the leech down, or the clue down. Um, obviously releasing that completely and having the sheet slightly eased so that the leech does tend to pop up. Yep. Is that right? Yeah, we expect more than uh, it's like more questions than normal presenters because spinning a trimming is one of the most dynamic cell to trim on a on a boat. So you can raise your hand any time to ask us about anything about spinning trimming. Thanks. Yeah. You got 
So again, it's very similar with you know sailing an S sail downwind in light breeze. It is sailing A sail in general breeze. You want to be sailing the higher angles. You want to be making sure the spinnaker has flow over it um, and is not um, you know not using it so much in its usual position. Um, so a little bit of a side one here, which I haven't got a diagram for. <coughs> If you imagine your bow spit to be here, this is your boat, the breeze is coming down the page, that is your symmetrical, asymmetric spinnaker. The deeper your spinnaker, the harder it is for the wind, it is going to be for the breeze to remain attached to your spinnaker throughout, throughout the curve of it. So if you have a spinnaker like this example here, then your, the wind is going to struggle to stay attached to that the whole way around. If you have a spinnaker which is a little flatter, or if you haven't strapped it, you know, haven't let it out so far that it's going so deep, then the wind is able to stay closer to that sail and exit much closer to the leech, leaving you without the end of the sail stalling. Does everyone understand that? So the idea of it having that sail flatter, obviously you'll have less power, but you're also trying to keep what's called the laminar flow over the sail for a longer period of time over the duration of that sail. All right? That's what we're trying to achieve when we're pulling these, pulling the sail flatter and we're trying to sail about at higher angles, we're trying to increase the, the wind flow over the sails, and we're also trying to reduce the, the turbulence at the end of the sails and the, and the, the flow of the sails releasing too early. Excuse me, Sam. Yes. So you're more focused on the laminar flow of the of the, uh, the breeze on the outside of the sail. That's correct, yes. As opposed to the inside of the sail. So the outside of the sail is what's actually driving you forward. So the, as you, as wind flows, do you want to jump back to a spinnaker shot there, Don? <coughs> yeah, the back one. Okay, that one's fine. So as the breeze flows over your spinnaker here, it accelerates around the outside of it. So what you're trying, to, what the wind is trying to do, is then creating a low, a low pressure system on the front of the sail, which is then driving the spinnaker forward. This is what creates the drive in the sails. You see here. So as you can see, the wind, the yellow, those yellow lines on the outside of the front edge of the sail, are accelerating faster as it's got a further distance to travel around the sail, and so it's creating that low pressure. What you're trying to do is keep that low, you want to make that low pressure as big as possible so the driver is in fact larger. Um, you obviously can't just make that a circle because what will happen is it will separate the difference between maintaining that flow over the sail and separating off to its own original course will be greater the bigger the sail is and the deeper the sail is. So you want to create essentially a deeper sail possible or the most powerful sail possible but not allow it to separate. So it's kind of, you really do have to find the, the different the balance between that. Is that okay? Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Uh, pull factor versus push factor, I guess, right? Yes, correct. Let me know if anyone needs translation. Yeah. So the heavier sailing in relative to the lighter sailing is um, what we've done here is we've put this an example of up to heavy air. So we're going from light breeze when you're sailing angles downwind, and then you're moving on to a, we're moving up the breeze range. So around, you're looking at 10 knots or so. Yeah. So what you're looking to do here is you're looking to create a full at sail, something that is now, as the breezes come up, you're looking to create or have that sail uh, power your boat a little bit more. So as we spoke about before, a deep sail is a more powerful sail we can then use our controls to then start to power this forward. Um, what we're looking for is a more powerful luff, so you can start to ease the sheet out to start rolling that sail forward. The sail will start rolling to windward for you. Um, you're starting to tighten that leech down because the sail, will, uh, so that, that breeze is now going to stick to that sail a lot better with you having that more breeze around. Um, that leech, you, you can now tighten the leech down. So obviously you have, you guys are going to have a little bit more turbulence coming off the leech, off the tailing edge of the sail, the leech. Um, but as you're, you know, you're, you're 
your power compensation for that is much greater for it. Um, with more leech tension also comes more stability. You, you are able to gain more stability over that. Um, if you jump to this is this is not as relevant in asymmetric cells as it is S cells. Um, so you see here we've got a picture from S cells, some symmetrical cells, downward cells. Um, that's right. What you're looking for here is very again similar, but with S cells, you are tactically you're playing a different game. So we're looking at trying to create separation between the cells rather than fore and aft, windward and leeward. Windward and leeward. Um, with a S cell, the leech factor, the stabilization in the leech factor is much greater. So we can having that leech tight will give us a lot more stability. Down, you know, as you're going directly downward, it'll give you a lot more stability. Um, if you start to release the leech up, you'll find that your cell does start to roll back and forth and you're unable to control it as well. It's also not as, not as fast um, having that cell move around. Um, you obviously still want your luff curling, you want, you know, want to be easing your sheet so your luff is starting to curl. You're still generating as much power as possible at this point. Um, and you're still, tr you're still trying to sell how am I saying this? You're still trying to make the body as powerful as possible at this point. Um, we, we talk about light wave and heavy and different. Yeah, you can talk about that a little bit. Let's go back to light wave trimming and heavy air trimming and heavy symmetrical. So the where were we last time? Light air asymmetrical. You're going to go on there. We're on the light. So. What we want to talk about is more of the light air towards the heavier settings. So what we're focusing on here is more of that sort of five to ten, twelve knot range, where you're still looking, you're still, you know, the boat's not quite powered up. You're still looking for power, um, and then heavier range is kind of beyond that. We don't really want to focus on it too much. Um, as the boat starts to play, so if you go into this, the next slide, the heavier setting, really, yeah. So as the boat starts to play, we're looking here at the power, as generating power for as much, you know, as much speed as possible before the boat starts playing. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but what, we, what we're trying to do here is you know, create that fuller sail, which is then driving the boat as, as powerful as possible, not, efficient, not making it more efficient because the boat's not going as fast as it can yet. Um, again, to recount those things, so we're looking for a fuller sail, not such a tight luff. Um, Allowing itself to roll around to windward or project forward, you like to say. Um, a tighter leech, which is then again gaining, gathering more of that power to try and to retain, retain the power. Um, more stability. Um, and then the last one there is driving to the luff. So driving to the sail is, as the breeze picks up, we don't want to be tuning that sail so often. We don't want to be adjusting it every couple of seconds. We want to be fighting a point where the sail is nicely, nicely curling. So you can see here the the of the sail is just coming around to us. We want to be finding that position, and we want to kind of be holding it as long as possible. What that allows the driver to do is it allows the driver to then try and sail around or sail to the spinnaker. So when the breeze does start to change, or when the breeze increases, he can bear away or come up depending on how the boat, is, how the sail is reacting to it. We don't always want to be trimming that sail to con consistently moving it in and out because then sail is changing shape so often. I'd rather have the sail sit there and the flow can then um, maintain, maintain itself to the sail, if that makes sense. Is that alright? And it should apply to all boats, it doesn't matter the size. Yeah, so this, uh, yes, a very good point though. So the size, again, size does not matter. If the boat is 50 foot long or if it's 10 foot long, the same principles apply to everything. As you're in a lighter boat and a smaller boat, the acceleration and deceleration will have an effect, but the whole principle is the same. But you really want to maintain that flow as long as possible. Yeah, so we tapped we came we came up this one a little bit. Um, so a couple of things on this. So trimming trimming the spinnaker here, we want to focus on um, 
projecting the top of the sail out. We want to be creating the most powerful sail area as high as possible or as, as far off the boat from possible. So sometimes the things we do here, we are raising the pole to match the clue height or even sometimes a little bit higher just to try and falsify that projection forward. Um, we're easing the halyard off a little bit, again, to just project forward um, that spinnaker, getting, gaining, you know, gaining that the cleaner pressure higher up. Um, what else are we talking about here? Can you talk about the position of the pole in relation to the end? Yeah, so with an S sail here, we can, as a, as a general term in this heavier breeze, we always want to be trying to separate the sail windward and leeward off the, off the sails. Right? So the mainsail, obviously on this picture, to your left, and the spinnaker to your right. You want to gain as much separation as possible so that you'll have two, per, you know, two sails in perfect wind, ideally. Um, you can also do this on an A sail or on, on a pole sail as well by doing pro, like projecting the sail to windward. So you don't always have to use the pole to do it. You can ease the sheets um, and roll the boat slightly to windward to allow the spinnaker to roll, to roll out and have a cleaner breeze. Um, in the lighter breeze, as we spoke about earlier, we're doing those angles, so having that pole forward, essentially making an A-sail would be the result. So, sail straight past matter, yeah. yeah, the sail shape does matter, so you're, you're obviously still trying to maintain, as I said, that, you know, that, that, that tighter leech, that fuller, set, that fuller sail pro, uh, projection, while, main, while having that pole back, but you still can have that projection separated from the mainsail and maintain the shape. Any other questions? Do you want to talk about the uh, DMG symmetrical one and the corporate one? Um, I think we're, we're talking about... Sorry. Yep. I want to ask about, about a heavy air trim and you are talking about uh, how many lots of wings? <coughs> so, heavy air trim, well, what we're talking about here is up to sort of that 15 knot range mm -hmm. once before you're planing. If it's over, uh, because most of the case we will experience with it. If you're overpowered, then what will we do? What so if you're feeling overpowered, on a, on a, I mean, generally we're always trying to we're trying to search for a faster boat. That's always what you know, that's always what we're striving to be, you know, faster, right? Yeah. So the, in these scenarios, we're we're still searching for power. We're still searching to gain gain boat speed. Mm -hmm. Once you once your boat starts planing, you are changing mode again. <coughs> So you're changing from, you know, in this scenario, very simply, you're changing from a flatter cell, which maintains the flow, and you know, still maintaining is, maintaining the flow while capturing as much power as possible, and you're moving to a, as the breeze picks up there, you're moving to a more powerful mode, but you're searching for power, and your eight your sail is able to maintain that flow around it, um, and then once you start planing, you can then move into another mode where you're trying to then reduce. The power in the sail because you've obviously the wind's strong enough. You're reducing power and trying to then reduce the drag of the sail. So you're then opening the twist up again. You're almost going into, back into that light mode setting, very similar to that light mode setting. You're re opening the twist, uh, increasing the twist, and twisting the sail off more, um, and then you're flattening the sail more as well. So if you go back on it to the picture of the two different sails, the A1, A2. So the A1 is obviously for reaching and for light wind sailing. So the, the reason it's for light wind sailing, the reason it's for reaching is because in light wind you do reach to create that apparent winds. Your A2 is obviously bigger in the shoulders and a deeper sail to gain more power. But as the breeze picks up again, you generally start to move back towards sail more like the A1, in, not exactly like the A1, they're heavy material and different shapes, but more similar in profile to that A1 where it's more for reaching as the breeze starts to move forward with the parent winds. And you're also able to trim it very similar to that light wind setting where you're tightening that luff out and opening the leech again. Does that make sense? I want to ask some people told me is that to to find the jeep together to reduce the power. Does it make sense? To reduce the power, no. Yeah. To increase the power, yes. <laughs> yeah, to increase the power, yeah. Sometimes we'll work, 
if, you're, if you leave your jib up and it starts flapping, then it will take the wind from your spinnaker and you will then be a smaller sail up and a bigger sail down, but it's not a long-term solution. The engine turn, Tom? Yeah, so Tom's going to talk to you a little bit about VMG turning here. So, yeah, VMG actually is talking about how do you get to your destination at the, at the fastest speed. Even you are sailing on downwind with a, with, with a asymmetrical spinnaker or symmetrical spinnaker, which is not really actually a straight line to, to where your destination is. Like, uh, if you're sailing to the bottom mark, if you go on a straight line to the bottom mark and you are really actually go slower than you doing a success course. So anyway, next slide. Only one. Uh, so uh, yeah, how do you create the best VMG is actually you building speed by sailing high and creating a parallel wind and soaking with it. When you create a parallel wind, actually you go faster than the than the real wind and you create your apparent wind, then you apparent wind start to swing uh, forward to the boat, and then you can actually sail a deeper angle. Then this, yeah, apparent wind is easily found on internet about that basic, basic theory. And about uh, sailing to hill angle is like how you trim the boat from side to side. And when you soak that, you really want to kill the boat and working with a sail to get a better turn than when you heal the ball to one side and you sail, it's like the screen can swing to either side of the boat as well. If you going if you're soaking off the wind, then when you heal the ball to windward, actually you swing your sail a little bit to the windward side as well and you uh, so relatively <coughs> your wind will enter your spinnaker with a better angle and it creates a better uh, power out of it. Using a set heel angle to steer, as I said, it's like when you turn the boat, you try to do everything you can on the boat, including a sail trimming to steer the boat <coughs> to reduce less steering. And it reduces reduce losses during the race. And actually, it means you go, you're gaining place on the race course. Creating a parent win. Creating a parent win actually is like, when, you, when you're going really deep and the pressure is gone, and you lose the pressure, you've got to head up again to your proper attacking angle on the race course. Then you trim all the cell to the proper attack angle, then you create another apparent wind on the cell, then you can follow that apparent wind angle, then you actually going deeper on the course again according to the apparent wind angle. Then actually you're gaining, it's like a couple of degrees on the race course, then you are faster and better VMG to your bottom mark. Any questions? Uh, main cell doing downwind, paying attention to apparent wind. So actually when you're going really fast or just up to the wind speed during downwind course, it's like the same as the photo uh, of the of the boat in this photo. It's like you can see the main cell actually is trimming really close to the middle of the boat. And this actually telling the apparent wind angle if they trim it correctly. So I think what Dom's trying to say here is that we've got to be very conscious of how we trim the mainsail when we're going downwind. So obviously the focus here is the spinnakers and understanding that, but a lot of what we see that uh, people, doing, uh, people are doing wrong or mistaken is that the mainsail actually, the, ma the angle of the mainsail is actually much closer in than what you'd think is appropriate. So obviously these are very quick boats, but the breeze is quite light. Um, and one very noticeable thing you can see is that the main, all the mains are very, very tight in. So when you're going downwind, the first thing you're doing is you're creating apparent wind when you, as, as you start moving quickly. Um, the important thing, really though, is not uh, disturbing that section between the spinnaker and the mainsail. You want to be creating the, a flow 
at the exit of the speaker that isn't disturbed, and having that main solenoid really does help. Um, as you can see here on this far, but here, their mainsail was almost all the way in and upwind or a very high reaching position. Um, they are they're pretty much going downwind and get to, oh, as downwind as you can in light breeze. Um, as, soon as, you start to clock, as soon as you start to ease that mainsail out, you'll notice that the slot between the spinnaker and the mainsail will start to reduce, and that's counterintuitive to what most people think, as they don't want to let the mainsail out going downwind. It's also the opposite to what we want. As we said, we want to ease that leach out, creating a bigger slot there. Yep, does that make sense? Yep. Sam, what would be your best estimate of true wind angle for that photo? True wind angle, I'd say probably 140, 130. So they almost look like they're reaching. It'll be, it, you can see how upright the boats are. People yeah. are trying to get weight to lured as these guys are. The boats are, uh, it's probably five or six knots there. There's not a lot of wind. As it, the lighter the wind gets, the higher angles you have to sail to maintain, you know, maintain boat speed and get the apparent wind building to when you can then start soaking away with it. So this is an extreme example we pulled up, but it's just to illustrate that you really do have to sheet that main on hard and create that separation between the spinnaker and the mainsail. And even in a windier condition, you're not going to see a huge difference to that. You're not going to see the mainsails all the way out. The, the shrouds are in, or, and the mains twisted out. You'll see that they're trying to maintain that slot. Okay. And the middle one has better sound trim than the back on the spinnaker. See, they're even, they're even struggling here to keep the sails fully inflated. They're sagging down by the weight themselves. Any questions? Um, yep. A spin or a kitten, the slot between the do you mean you will on purpose, on purpose uh, over trip the main a bit? That's correct. So the focus what we're trying to do here is we're trying to create a larger gap here, which creates the flow. So the real engine here is the spinnaker rather than the mainsail. So we are willing to sacrifice some mainsail trim for that spinnaker to fly. If you were to fly, if you were to sail downwind with just a spinnaker versus just a mainsail you're going to be quicker with a, with a spinnaker, so that's going to be your priority. Um, you obviously don't want to be shooting your mainsail so far over that it's stalling, but you do want to be creating as big as a gap as possible. Yep. It's all right? <coughs> okay. I'm going to next one. So the next one is on staysails. Um, the staysail is actually quite a big part in becoming a bigger part or more relative to some of the boats around Hong Kong. Um, and the real purpose of this is to gain extra, obviously extra speed and also a lot of it is extra depth while sailing downwards. So yeah, the addition, the real big thing it does help for is it creates and it uh, accelerates the breeze into that slot between the spinnaker and the mainsail. Um, but what we don't want to be doing here is we don't want to be in uh, disrupting the spinnaker here. So one of the very um, important things is to understand how to trim it while you're using it, because it can also be a very big negative as well as a positive if you use it wrong. Um, the main benefit of actually having, having that extra sail up forward affects how the boat is balanced. Having more sail area, up, sail area up forward is going to help pull your bow away from the wind and gain depth because you're not sacrificing um, sail area for it. What you do want to make sure of is that you're not disrupting the spinnaker. So what I mean by that is obviously when you have a sail up, there is turbulence caused by it. Um, most of this turbulence comes off the top of the sail and as the breeze exits off it to the back and the top of the sail. So how we normally trim these sails is we have them very quite you know fairly tight in the bottom, so that's where we're getting getting our gains from. And as you get to the top of it, you're twisting off a huge amount. So as you can see here, the top of the sail is hardly working. It's quite, it's really twisted off. It's almost flapping. Um, the idea is just to really reduce the amount of drag and turbulence that we're causing on the top of it, which will then affect the spinnaker. Um, often what will happen is, that, well, as it does happen when you're sailing, the spinnaker will collapse or the spinnaker starts to get light. As soon as you start to feel the spinnaker get light or feels a bit strange, 
then you're almost always going to get the stasial trimmer to ease the stasial. Um, if the spinnaker starts to collapse, you immediately either want to furl the stasial or want to let it collapse because that's going to make it very difficult for you guys to get the spinnaker back flying or it's also going to make it more difficult if, it's, if it is flying and you want to maintain it flying. So as soon as you start to feel anything bad with the spinnaker, like feel uncomfortable with the spinnaker or flying the spinnaker or the spinnaker is collapsing, you want to either furl or uh, release your stasial sheets yeah, to get that flying again because you are essentially taking breeze from the, sta from the spinnaker for that stasial. Um, when to use a stasial? So you generally don't use a stasial on lighter breeze. Lighter breeze, you're still focusing on trying to get the spinnaker to fly and get the, the flow of the spinnaker to work well. So you don't want to be using it. You generally start to use it around the 12 knot range. That's when you're starting to, the boat's starting to move forward. You're still, you know, you're, you have plenty of power in your spinnaker and you're searching for more power and, and more depth now. So the spinnaker stasial can then go up and you can start using it. But obviously, as I say, as the breeze drops, or the spinnaker starts to become difficult to use, then we can then start to uh, release it or furl it up, depending on what system you have up there. Um, when not to use the stasial, so no, that kind of comes below that 12 knot range, you don't want to be using that stasial and you don't want to be using it when you're struggling to use that spinnaker. If there's anything that's causing you not to use the spinnaker or making it difficult, then the stasials obviously then can become more of a problem and obsolete. Any questions? Yep. What if you're sailing in magic and you're kind of stuck with the stay sail? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a jib. It's called a jib. <laughs> so, um, a lot of boats these days are actually opting for using, you know, in heavier breeze rather than dropping the jib down at the top mark, figuring, you know, putting that jib, putting that jib down away and then putting the stasial back up. They're actually leaving the jibs up because when you're, when you're on a J3, it's not as big as a full jib and you're actually able to use it just as well as a, as a stasial. Um, in a magic and those lighter breezes, you can obviously do this, a, something similar where when I, when I say ease the sheet, you can release it. So when, you're, when you are having trouble flying the spinnaker, you should be le releasing that sheet, the jib sheet, and making sure it's not disturbing or taking breeze away from the spinnaker. Um, something just as a, as a small input and giving you guys an idea about it, when we do use the jibs on these bigger boats for in these breezier conditions, what we'll often do is we'll drop the jib halfway or, or two thirds when we're doing the hoists or when we're doing some maneuvers. <coughs> this is because what it does is it's essentially making that sail smaller by dropping it and then allowing us to get that sail, the spinnaker to feel much easier and a lot quicker. And then we can then rehoist the jib afterwards or continue on as we were if we we're having trouble. Any questions? So you're adding sail area in front of the keel, which is obviously then adding sail area to a unbalancing the boat, which is then trying to pull you down. It's also adding more sail area in general to the boat, which is then allowing you to go faster and then slowly bear away with that apparent wind. So if you add, if you added a bigger if you added a bigger spinnaker, you'd be able to slowly take away as well. Anyone else? Nope. So we'll go back to uh, mm -hmm. this first. Yeah. <coughs> uh, spinning a trimmer is a secondary driver. When I'm trimming a spinning on a boat, it's like, um, most of the hands will always ask me to fit in a lot of information and tension on the, on the spinning sheet to say they have any room to soak down on the race course. And Normally, you will constantly filling in all the information you feel about the spinnaker and the wind. It's like how's the angle? Do you have good feeling on the on the spinnaker? Any room for you to keep easing the spinnaker until you get a better angle, better VMG down to the bottom mark. And understanding a position lead, it's like uh, there are different race course on the water, like island race, uh, windward leeward and any different modes, just like high mode and low mode, you really want to take that in a specific condition. So you have to constantly talk to tacticians and ask them like, what do they want? They want best VMG all the time, or do they want to sell a higher cost at a specific time, and or lower cost, or you 
sometimes you want an island cost depends on the breeze strength, then you are going straight to the next island and actually this is not the best VMG cost. So you have to understand what the conditions live on the water. And the uh, ability to have partition needs is like um, if you have a couple of boats around you, kind of like close contact, you have to get yourself out of the way that you have to sometimes a little bit anticipating for the next move. It's like you anticipating you are really need to go high to get out of someone's shadows on the leeward side, or you really want to um, overtake someone on the windward side. So this is kind of the ability as a spinning treatment to have partition. Constant feedback, as I said, it's like you gotta feedback to whoever, and everyone gets ready. Actually, if you're saying that uh, you are easing on the spinnaker sheets because you have good pressure on the spinnaker, then everyone sitting on the rail actually they will act properly to try to lean out a little bit more to have the boat steering and get faster. And uh, if you talk to the helmsman constantly, then they will have to interact with you to get the boat not tipping over like this one. And um, yeah, so communication and constant feedback to everyone actually. Everyone are listening, even they are not saying a word. But actually, if you are racing on the same boat and you are one team, everyone wants to win the race and they will do it properly to help the whole maneuver faster on the water. Reacting the freeze course is like some boats have statistical or navigation, so I keep looking back and fitting fitting freeze or wave. So when there's big bullets coming down from the high, then someone cutting down on the breeze call, it's like three, two, one, breeze on us now, then you will anticipate the move, it's like you're going to ease for the next move or you're going to trim in because there could be a soft spot in front of you. So this is the kind of communication for the spinnaker trimmer or the water. Any questions? have what you say you should either ease or trim in. Yep. Um, I read in one of those North Sales books that's actually not good if you're constantly playing with the sheets. And instead, if there's a breeze coming in, you should rather head down straight to the bottom up. Uh, on a symmetrical uh, as 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 a symmetrical. Yeah. Yeah, because you Which you, you you're going so deep yeah. already, and you are not really playing with uh, a pattern wind. Or the, or the symmetrical spinning. If you have a big breeze, your boat will just go a little bit faster instead of you getting up and down on the... On well, the I guess the question is, are you better off keeping the sail shape as is um, and changing course, or should you keep the course and play with the sheets? We try to minimize... Yeah, uh, we try to minimize the moves on every single... Trimming, it's like the steering, the sail trimming. You, we tr you try to minimize every single move to maintain the content speed, speed down to your destination. And if you move, if you have a big steering up and down the the way, and according to the breeze, that you might take a longer course to your to where you want to go. Right. If you're not really uh, uh, doing maneuver or trimming <coughs> properly on the boat, and you might go slower than you expect to the next destination. So this is about the balance. You still have to trim a little bit, but everyone have a tiny move on the maneuver, then actually it balance out the big move <coughs> on only one thing. It's like you only do the self trimming or you only do on the hemming. So everyone just do a little, it helps a lot to get the boat faster and Less maneuver for everyone. Is that okay for a question? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> what about Mr. Jim? So we we'll just do a general uh, <coughs> overall one just to <coughs> consolidate here. So we got controls, Dom went through them. You obviously understand most of what they are. They are just your controls to make your spinnaker the shape you really want it to be. You know, getting a, getting 
having the ability to change it to morph it into the shape you want it for the conditions you're in. Um, so the cell shapes, you actually have the your three main your three main principles you're looking at here: your angle attack, your shape, and your twist. So these three things change depending on your conditions and what you're looking to do with the boat. Um, if you're looking for a high mode or a low mode, you can modify these to modify your spinnaker with these three parameters to make your boat achieve that, or your sail achieve that. Um, in a so in a light light air trimming, you're looking for a tight uh, tighter luff, a tighter luff, so generally a flat sail overall. That way your breeze is not gonna the laminar flow will maintain across your sails. The breeze is not gonna exit your sails halfway through. You want an open leak profile again to reduce the amount of uh, re reduce the amount of uh, turbulence in your sails, and you're not again same thing. You're not trying to make that wind. Shut down. You're not trying to make that wind curve in such a dramatic angle um, in such light air light winds. A leeward heel is always is generally helpful just to again maintain your sails constant flying shape without rocking in and out. Um, keeping your apparent wind angle up, that again helps your boat sail in more wind than is actually available to you. Um, so heavier trimming, you're looking to increase your power, so you're then tightening your leech, you're then filling your, or making your sail a bit more powerful, a fuller luff, easing your sheet out, trying to round that luff out, create the projection forwards. Um, you're driving the boat, or trimming the boat slightly, trimming yourself slightly less, the driver can do more of the trimming. Your boat is starting to increase speed, so your steering is more, more capable of steering maneuvers. Um, your transition to the next stage is then planing. So you're planing, you're starting to go back into that similar to the light wind setting, where you're starting to flatten your sail because your boat is becoming more efficient. The sails of the wind is passing your sails much more quickly and you don't need the extra power because your boat is already starting to plane. Um, you're looking to open your leech up, you need to flatten your luff out, flatten your sail in general, um, and you're looking to, again, steer it, be steering with less, less movement in the spinnaker and more on the driver's side. Um, your VNG sailing, so again, come back on that. You're generally trying to maintain more set, more speed over your sails than you currently have. So you're heating the boat up in the lighter, in the lighter, lighter parts of the course. You're sailing to heel angle, so you're letting your boat sit at a certain heel angle. And as your boat starts to come up right, you're getting less power. You can heat the boat up, gaining more power. Um, and same with the spinnaker. You're trying to, you're trying, you're talk, constantly talking to your helmsman, feeding him the information if your spinnaker is heavy or light. Um, and trying to create that apparent wind so you can then bear away and you know, gain depth. Your VMG is generally just your fastest course downwind, or any, any direction actually, your fastest course downwind rather than reaching, rather than going dead running when you're slow. It's the average between them or the fastest between them. Um, so again with the mainsail, we're looking at trying to <coughs> reduce the amount the mainsail is causing, or reduce the, sorry, increase the slot between the mainsail and the spinnaker. We're not looking at so much the mainsail efficiencies, but the actual spinnaker efficiencies, and not trying to store the spinnaker by reducing that gap by using the mainsail, um, keeping the gap clear between the spinnaker and the main. The spacer or jib on a magic. Um, we're looking at bringing it up to net, above that 12, around that 12 knot range, making sure that the spinnaker, the spinnaker is not at all affected by the staysail, making sure the staysail is an assist and not uh, damaging the, the you know, functionality of the spinnaker. The spinnaker trimmer has to be very clear on how much heat, if it's, it's getting harder to trim the spinnaker, and the staysail trimmer has to react to it by furling or dropping or releasing the sheet. If the spinnaker collapses, again, Definitely as fast as possible, easing the stational sheets, making sure the spinnaker then refly, and then assessing whether the stational can go back out or unfurled. Sorry, Sam. Yep. What, what's the point of the So, 
is a chevron's cell chevrons. These are just visual indications because sometimes on a white sail in a sunny day it's quite hard to see if the sail is actually laughing or it's staying maintained straight. And these are visual indication. As you see the, that sort of the chevron, you'll be able, as it curls round, you will actually be able to see that the sail is curling round because there's as the angle is, they'll get bigger and smaller as they do that. Any questions? Maybe? Next, uh, communication. Being a being a, uh, a, genica, a genica or a spinnaker or a trimmer, you have to be very, very in touch with your helmsman. He can't feel the boat all the time. He doesn't have a very good idea of of how much power is in the boat. So some, you have to be very, very good with communication. If you're feeling a lot of pressure, a little pressure, he can then base his decisions to come up slightly, bear away slightly on those things you're feeling. Um, same with your tactician. You should be very aware of what your tactician is desiring. If a tactician is looking for a low mode tactically or boat on boat, you need to be able to understand that and try and assist getting your boat, to, your spinnaker to do that, either by putting your pole back on an asymmetric or just easing the sheet and maybe the tack line on an asymmetric boat. Um, reacting to breeze calls, having a good understanding of if you're looking, if more pressure is coming to you, if it's getting generally lighter across the course, all of these things sh should be in your, you know, in your understanding to be able to react properly. Sam? Yes? So what's your best advice in this photo then? <laughs> <laughs> How do we get out of that? How would you get out of that? Uh, the guy, of, they've obviously done a Chinese there. The yeah, guy on the yeah. sheet, or the guy, whichever side you think that is, should be easing. Um, in a situation where you've got yourself into a hard broach like this, one of the only things you can do is easing the halyard. Mm. Normally you're sit, when you're set like that, your boat's knocked down, your spinnaker is full, and it's not really stopping, it's not easing itself off when you're coming up right. You need to release the halyard, and get, somebody, get your guys to get forward and pull it kind of as soon as possible, or it's going to go under your boat. So halyard off is always the solution. Sometimes what you can do is you can release the halyard like three or four lengths, and then three or four meters, sorry, and then see if that brings your boat upright, because often that will collapse the spinnaker, and you're able to then retrieve it then, or place it back up if you want to keep going. It's always good to look at these situations in hindsight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that guy is probably much better sailor than I am, but he's, he's in there, so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, do you guys have any more questions? Please feel free to ask them. Question. Yes. Um, how can you slot between the spin and the main? Sorry? Uh, can you slot between the spin and the main? Um, does it apply to both a, a and the main sail and the Yes, it does. So having the distance between the main sail uh, and the spinnaker, or the a cell and the s cell is very relative. The difference being that when you're on an s cell, you're generally going you know, further away from the wind, you're doing it at 150, 140, um, and you're able to separate the sails right to left. So if you're looking, hold on, I'll find a picture for you here. So if you're looking at this picture here, you'll see that these guys are going very deep downwinds. So you're able to bring the pole back, and you're able to ease the main out further. And this is because the angle, of the, the angle that the boat is sailing at is much different. So the distance between the leech here and, the, la and the, the leech of the mainsail and the leech of the spinnaker is separated by fore and aft distance. But if you're going on a re or more a reaching angle like a A sail, your distance is right to left. So the separation is still very important. It's just slightly different angle-wise as you're going at different angles down the course. But yes, very equally equally important for sure. Yes, on a, on a smaller boat, yep. uh, let's say an inch long. Yep. <clears throat> When you jibe, yes. Um, uh, is it? Do you lose more speed by floating the speed around the front, or doing it very quickly, collapsing it, moving the pole across? Certainly, and back in? certainly with more with maintaining that spinnaker flying the whole time. So, in something like an actual, you almost you, you're sailing so deep sometimes that when you do the jibe, it actually shouldn't affect your sailing at all. So you're Obviously, the, the, the thing that will matter is that you're going very dead downwind rather than slightly higher, 150, 140. Um, mm -hmm. And so what you'll generally do is sheet the main in quite, quite a lot. Mm -hmm. And so as you're going through the jibe, 
your, the breeze is slicing through the mainsail and fill, keeping that kite filled the whole time. And as that kite is on the new side, on the new board, you're then able to drive the main over and it's sailed through unrestricted. Oh. <coughs> Yeah, always fast to sell, keeping that spinnaker flying as much as long as possible. As I said, the spinnaker is a much bigger driver than the mainsail, so you're better off keeping that flying. Any more questions? No? Good. I think that's all. Mm -hmm. all right.